It was the summer of the 2011, sixth year of my relocating to the United States. I joined a group called Commonwealth, a group of people would get together once a week and talk about things I thought people will never talk about. Yeah, not that. <laughs> they talk about our inner beings, our inner power, our thoughts and their role in our lives. <clears throat> and one day it was my turn to talk. I got really nervous because my English was maybe 50%. And also, I didn't know what to say, but suddenly, these words came out of my mouth. I feel like there's a little girl inside me who doesn't let me to live normal life like anyone else. If I could just kill her, I would be released and be normal. I remember I looked around the room and I thought, who said these words? Where did they come from? <laughs> I still don't know. But that was the beginning of my journey to finding my true self. After my harsh statement, there was a deep silence in that room, as if everyone was frozen. And then I noticed a young man sitting beside me was in tears. I feel the same, he whispered to me. After a long pause, finally the leader of our group talked and she said, let's not kill that girl, we need her. Three years later, I will finally meet that girl, but I'll get to that. My life seemed to be different from the beginning. I grew up on the shore of Caspian Sea in the era of Soviet stagnation. As a child, I was really sensitive to energy. I always felt like there should be more to life than we live. There is more than we can see with our human eyes. I am the fifth of the eight children in my family, and we lived um, in an old house built by my grandfather. The house had three bedrooms, one long corridor-like living room and a kitchen. The, the building had like a tall ceilings and wood floors as if you see in the old houses. I remember as a teenager, once a day, I would lock myself in one of those rooms. I would sit down on the floor and I would listen. Now I don't know where did I learn to be quiet with myself, but I was felt like I inspired to keep doing it. And I don't know what would I hear, but it always felt good and I was looking forward to it all the time. At that time, I thought that was weird and crazy. No one should know about it. So I kept secret to myself. I couldn't explain it anyway. As I grew older, I tried to forget about my craziness and act like a normal. But I always felt this um, existence of this unexplainable something. It felt like I'm living two lives. At one side, this normal, moron teenager that everyone sees and accepts. And the other side, this uh, magical flying creature that I'm hiding in myself. This duality made me to crawl inside. And I become more sad and isolated. I couldn't let anyone in. And I remember one time one of my coworkers told me that I'm like a porcupine. Charming from afar, but if someone wants to come close to me, I show my needles. <laughs> I couldn't let anyone in. Back then, uh, living in the Soviet country wasn't easy. 
But in, when I crawled inside myself, I never stopped asking questions inside, like how, why, what is this life about? What's the meaning of the human life? So living in the Soviet country in 70s wasn't easy. The country was corrupted and um, a lot of bureaucracy. It was especially hard for women uh, because they didn't have many rights as men. Now when I look back to my life and the situations I have been in, the events happen around me, I feel like I, I could have died or something bad could have happened to me. But it feels like there was always something invisible protecting me, like taking care of me. That brings us back to the summer of 2011 when I blurted out uh, about my, um, the inner child, the, the little girl inside me. Since then, my uh, questions become bigger and bolder. And I figured that there are a lot of people like me. I am not the only crazy one in the world. <laughs> one night when I was sleeping on the couch in our living room, suddenly I was awakened in the middle of the night and I saw her. And I saw that little girl that I told I wanted to kill. She was sitting there in the back of the couch, feet hanging down. Even today, I am not capable to describe her well. She was, looked like a human, but somewhat transparent. I could see through her. And um, she was like a pale light in the dark room. And I didn't scare, nor did I ask, who are you? Because I knew. Instead, I asked, what's your name? Pip, she answered, and she disappeared. Now, I didn't know such a name, or I didn't even understand the meaning of word. I never heard that word. I had to Google it right away. So the first meaning came up was the small hard seed inside the fruit, or excellent, very charming something or somebody. Reading those words made me almost cry because I understood that was the same little girl has been with me. Since my connecting with my pip, I understood that she has always been with me. She's protecting me, taking care of me. We write stories together she helps me to discover truths about myself. She helps me to achieve my dreams. One time, after a year, my reconnecting with my Pip, one night I cried. I told her I'm sorry that I abandoned her for a long time. And I, I said I'm sorry that I said I wanted to kill her. Suddenly, I felt how she rose up inside me, and she hugged me from the inside. I felt her warm and soothing energy all over my body, and I understood she never blamed me. She understood, and she knew me very well, better than myself. Sometimes I wake up in the morning sad, I always ask for comfort from her, and I feel the gradual change in my mood. There are no questions she doesn't have answers for, and her answers are always deep, always wise. I remember one time I was really busy and uh, very frustrated with everyday doings and the tasks I was thinking I, I was supposed to do, and suddenly I heard her giggly voice. She laughs usually when she talks. And she said, where do your responsibilities go? I was confused, what do you mean? She said, I mean, when you are not 
physically here in this world, where do your responsibilities go? Now that took my attention. Then nowhere, she said. They don't exist. You just made them up. Now you look at you. You are all disappointed and overwhelmed by them. Why don't you let them go? I feel the re relief from her message. Now my life has been different from the beginning because when I was born, when I was about to born, our country, I lived in a country of corruption and all people lived pretty much on bribery. So my dad couldn't pay extra money to deliver nurses. So she, he left my mother in delivery, in labor, at the hospital in neighboring town. Nurses wouldn't help her. She, so I was about to die and kill her as well. But by the some forces of the universe, the gynecologist from my own town was visiting the hospital at the same time. So she helped to safely deliver me and save my mother as well. That's how I stayed alive in this world. Today, when I look back to my life and I trace and, and connect the dots, everything felt weird or crazy back then now makes complete sense. Despite all odds, I was born. Through all hardships, all struggles, I stayed alive. I become stronger and wiser. Now I understand that was all because of her. She wanted to be born into human. She wanted to experience human life, to create and to expand whole universe. No matter what people say today or call me weird or crazy, I am stronger today because I am certain she exists. She many times showed that to me. It's so fascinating to me that I traveled a long way through the ocean and through the lands just to return to myself. I too believe that there is more to life than we live and there is more than we can see with our human eyes. And all the answers to life's questions already inside us, if we just take time to listen. Thank you. Thank you.